This is Triumph's latest motorcycle for the Indian market and it has a very familiar sounding name. It's called the Tiger Sport 660. But let me tell you, this motorcycle is unlike any Tiger that Triumph has launched in India to date. The Tiger Sport name has been used by Triumph in the past for a road-biased ADV style motorcycle that was sold overseas but never came here. However, the new Tiger Sport 660 is the first of these bikes to be sold in India and in this case, it's based on Triumph's latest and smallest capacity motorcycle. So it's common knowledge by now that this motorcycle is based on the Trident 660. But the key differentiator between these two bikes is that the Tiger Sport is a much bigger looking bike with a lot more presence. With its larger fairing 17-litre fuel tank and the extra height, the Tiger Sport catches the sort of attention that the compact Trident can only dream of. Design-wise, it's a sharp-looking thing with a triangular face and sleek LED headlamps that would be easy to mistake for a Japanese motorcycle. The rear section is similar to the Trident, but this bike gets a longer subframe which results in a much more spacious rider seat. The pillion seat isn't as large as some might expect considering that this is meant to be a sport Toro. However, there are some pannier attachment slots neatly integrated into the tail. The belly pan and engine protectors that you see on this bike though are both optional extras. With its huge handlebar risers, the Tiger Sport's riding position is upright, open and spacious. The windscreen works decently well for me in its low position, although we'd have to spend more time at highway speeds to know for sure. With a seat height of 835mm, it is a little tall, but the bike doesn't feel as large or top-heavy as the Kawasaki Vs 650 can. At 206 kilos, the Tiger Sport is also the lightest bike in its class. In terms of the instrument console, the display layout is a little different to the Trident 660, but the actual screens are very similar. The Triumph website lists this as a TFT display, but it is actually quite a simple looking unit that is mostly black and white with only a little colour seen here and there. This bike also has the optional Bluetooth connectivity module, which enables things like music control and navigation assists. In terms of features, it's a similar story to the Trident, with self-cancelling indicators, two riding modes, namely road and rain, and a switchable traction control system. Quality levels are acceptable for the price, although the windscreen did tend to rattle a little when riding on rough roads. The Tiger Sport comes across as a fairly nicely built motorcycle for the most part, and it definitely feels more premium than the Trident. There are, however, a few things that bug me. For one, this air intake here is fake. Now this might just be me, but fake air intakes are absolutely fine on your family sedan, not so much on your sporty motorcycle. Then there's the windscreen adjust mechanism. It's a simple push-pull system, but it's not very easy to use and it's quite hard to find the exact spot you want the windscreen in. Further back, the clutch cable is rooted right over where your hand would go to find the ignition key. And finally, there's the seat cover. It doesn't fit flush against the seat and it's stretched tight in the air above it. Another issue I had is that even at this price, this motorcycle doesn't get an adjustable clutch lever and I found that the lever was set out a little too far. Anyway, let's now move on to what is undoubtedly the biggest draw of this motorcycle, its engine. The 660cc 3-cylinder engine is taken straight from the Trident and that's actually quite a good thing because when we rode the Trident, we appreciated what a strong mid-range it had and how effortless it was to ride at almost any speed. That character really suits a bike like this. With identical power and torque figures as well as the same gearing as the Trident, this engine springs no surprises. When compared with its 650cc rivals, the Tiger Sport not only has more power but also a little more torque. And it's the sheer tractability of this engine that you will enjoy the most. The low speed throttle response is quite smooth and the low to mid range performance is superb. You can really ride about in as high a gear as you like. We often found ourselves in 6th gear at 35 km an hour or even climbing up some of the hilly stretches around Dehradun with the engine in 4th and 5th gear the whole time. Our bike also had an optional quick shifter installed which only added to the sense of ease and enjoyment. We spent the whole day riding around the mountains where the Tiger Sport's short gearing was a joy. However, if you plan to spend a lot of time at high speeds on the highway, you might want to look into making some changes to the sprocket sizes because I suspect that the RPMs could get quite high at fast cruising speeds. Nevertheless, 
This tractable nature makes a Tiger Sport easy and effortless to ride in most situations. It's also a great sounding engine and this sporty exhaust sound is going to be one of the bike's bigger draws. However, like the Trident, this engine feels buzzy when you cross 6000 rpm and there's quite a bit of vibration in the handlebar and foot pegs. The motor also produces a noticeable amount of heat and the clutch lever is on the heavy side. Overall, this smaller triple engine definitely isn't as smooth and free revving as the motor in the Triumph Street Triple 765. Thankfully, the wonderful mid-range means you really won't be revving it out too high most of the time. The Tiger Sports chassis is quite similar to the Trident's, but the suspension is different. This bike gets longer travel at both ends and it also gets this nice remote preload adjuster at the rear. Now, with this longer travel suspension, you'd expect this motorcycle to be a lovely plush riding thing, something like the Kawasaki Versus 650, which is one of its rivals. To some extent, it is, but it's not as good as we hoped it would be. With 150mm of suspension travel at both ends, the Tiger Sport has a similar setup to the Kawasaki Versus 650. And on smooth roads, it has a nice soft and floaty feel that many will like and expect from their touring machine. Unfortunately, it doesn't deal with bigger bumps and potholes as well as we'd like, and it tends to thud through rather than absorb. It's not horribly uncomfortable by any means, and the bike has enough ground clearance to get you through rough and broken roads without stress. But it's also not as impressive as the Versus 650 in this area. It also doesn't get any adjustability in the suspension apart from preload at the rear. Now with its 17-inch wheels and superbike wide tyres, this is no off-road machine. But as far as handling goes, there is quite a lot of potential to have fun. The bike feels easy, encouraging and willing to make direction changes without much effort. You can push it quite hard and have a good time. But if you're the sort of rider who enjoys riding aggressively and pushing the bike to the limit, this isn't the motorcycle for you. That's when the soft suspension starts to bounce and it reminds you that this is a motorcycle that prefers being ridden quickly rather than as fast as possible. Special mention must also go to the excellent Michelin Road 5 tyres that give you so much feel and confidence that you can continue to push even when the suspension starts to get unsettled. As for the brakes, they reflect the character of this motorcycle. They're not very sharp or immediate, but once you pull further on the lever, there's a good amount of power and feel available. Ultimately, the Tiger Sports 660 makes for a comfortable yet engaging sports torer, but it feels a little too expensive, especially when you consider that the suspension is good, but not Tiger good. Even at its introductory pricing in India, it costs more than the Kawasaki Z900 and is just 20,000 rupees less than the Triumph Street Triple R. Yes, those are both naked bikes, but they're also more engaging, better equipped and produce about 40 horsepower more. At an introductory price of just under 9 lakh rupees ex showroom, this motorcycle is a little more expensive than we hoped it would be. Then again, it fits neatly into the market above the Kawasaki Versus 650 and below the likes of the BMW F900XR, which are both similar sorts of motorcycles. At a similar price, you could also have the Suzuki V-Strom 650, but that bike has a 19-inch front wheel and it's more of an adventure motorcycle. This is strictly a road bike. It's all about the three-cylinder engine and the looks that it has to offer. Is it the best road riding experience at this price point? Well, we'd like to ride it some more and against some of its key rivals, to be sure.